how did the load do after 2,600 miles? Let's open up the back and find out. I see one machine tipped over. I think that's my error. I never tied it down to keep it from tipping. That was just stupid. Hey guys, sorry I've been gone for a while. I haven't done a video in, I don't know, three or four months. Um, the reason is I've moved. So we're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna talk about how I loaded this truck to get the shop here. I just drove from Atlanta, Georgia to Half Moon Bay, California. So it's outside San Francisco. So that's what today's gonna be about, moving machinery. I do move out quite often. I've developed a lot of different techniques for moving machinery. But today, I'm gonna show you a new technique. Just for this load, I'm not saying it's the right way of doing it, okay, first of all. But I'm saying I was successful in doing it this way. So when I loaded this truck, I actually had a forklift. It made it a lot easier to put the machinery in. I don't have a forklift to unload it here. So what I do have is an engine hoist. The goal of moving machinery around is to make sure the machinery doesn't move inside the truck. And if I had a wood floor, it'd be really easy. I would just literally screw two by fours down to the floor and hold the machinery in that way. Well, I couldn't do that here because the floor is aluminum. So what I ended up doing was building a frame network using two by fours and bracing the two by fours against the wall of the truck so the frame wouldn't move. So one of the challenges of working with a truck is there's no tie downs. So one of the things I ended up doing was putting in a two by four here and you can see it's just capped and it sits on the rail. This way I'm actually able to tie straps to it and pull everything in and keep the sides from collapsing. So here's a great example of how everything is blocked in. It's set off a grid. So the base of the grid is this two by four here. It runs back and is stopped by the wheel well for moving front and back. And then from side to side, I have another one. So that keeps it from the rails moving in on themselves. Then you can see from there, because of that frame network, I'm actually able to put in other two by fours like this, run it back side to side on a machine, and then I can run across here and hold the machine. So that machine stayed stable the whole time. You can also see what's here. Now something else we have to look at is, I loaded this all with a forklift. Now the challenge is I don't have a forklift here. I was thinking about buying one, just ran out of time. So I'm gonna actually use the engine hoist here in the corner. First to come out is gonna be the engine hoist. As you can see, everything is just screwed together with sheetrock screws. Now, if you're not sure how to block everything in, you just do it. Use extra two by fours. You don't want to find out that you didn't use enough blocking. Here's an example. I just have this one short little piece in here. That just kept the pallet jack from moving back and forth. And obviously it worked because the pallet jack is still in the truck. never ran a truck with such a short ramp. This makes me unhappy. So the next thing for me to move is the bandsaw. Now I'm using the, taking out the bandsaw, I'm gonna actually roll it down the ramp. I gotta say this is probably one of the dumbest things I'm gonna do, especially since it's the first thing I'm moving out, is to bring it down this ramp. And hopefully it doesn't get out of control. If it does, we'll have it at least on tape. just found oil underneath the bandsaw. The transmission must be leaking. Let's not step in it. Okay, I decided this was really a bad idea. That ramp is probably at about, I don't know, 20 degrees, which makes it a very heavy bandsaw for one person to operate. We're gonna bring out the engine hoist, do it the safe way, the smart way. You know, when you ever ask yourself a question, can you do it? Probably the answer is no. So setting this whole thing up, 
I didn't just use the two by fours to keep the tools from sliding. I also use straps. Use as many straps as you can. Buy an extra one. The machinery is expensive. An accident is really expensive. So I've got things fairly well tied down. Obviously I tied them down well enough because the only thing that moved was, I don't know if you can see it, it's the spot welder back there that's out of position. That was because somebody forgot to tie it down. I think I'll blame that on the cat. Okay, the next thing up for me to move is the engine hoist. Now the engine hoist is gonna be my backbone to moving everything since I don't have a forklift here. But because it is so heavy, I do need to take it apart. I'll safely be able to get it down the ramp since I chickened it out on moving the bandsaw. Let's put it back together again. Now we'll tackle the bandsaw in a safe way. So one of the things I forgot to bring with me was a tripod. So how's that for building something cool? Now we got the engine hoist put together. We've got a new ram for it. Uh, I'm not sure which is dumber. Trying to get the bandsaw down the ramp or using an 8,000 ton ram from Harbor Freight. Let's find out. That was a close one. I should have tested the RAM before I left the house. So now I want to talk to you about this engine hoist, what makes it unique. It's oversized. If you look at the base, it's wide enough to actually put a pallet in between it so I can actually pick up a machine, put on the pallet. If you look at the base, you can see one of the things, how I cut off, how I cut off what originally was here and then built an all new frame around it. Also, one of the other things I did to it was I added this extension here. And what it did is, mechanically, it gave me the ability to lift it up quite a bit higher. So with these few modifications, I think this thing will reach, I wanna say 12 feet in the air, so it's pretty high up. Let's find out if this is gonna work. Challenge to lifting up any machinery is finding where its balance point is. So we're gonna to try to lift in this area here. Be careful when the straps are pulling up. One of the challenges you have with something like this, it has a blade on it. If the blade touches one of the straps, it could cut it. Something else to look for is, I've got this up against a point here, so the strap, if the whole load shifts on me, a strap can slide, so I try to put it against something that'll actually stop it from doing that. Sorry to disappoint you guys that there was no accident. First machine out, let's keep going. So I thought one of the smart things for me to do is to put the two by four back here on the frame just to make sure that if I'm pulling on something I don't get it too close to the edge and it comes out. If you go on to uh, YouTube and search accidents, machine shop accidents, I saw one guy, he was moving a pallet jack. Pallet jack came over the edge he held on to it, literally launched him over the boxes and onto the ground 15 feet away. How many times have you guys seen a machine that has a handle bent? Well, it probably was bent while it was being moved. So I take off all the handles. We've got the work hat up there. We're gonna take that off. The reason we're gonna take it off is it's extra weight. And this machine here is all cast on the base. It's a tool cutter grinder, a KOE tool cutter grinder. I think it's weighing in, I wanna say about a thousand pounds. So it's pretty heavy. So what I like to do is take all extra weight off of it 
just to make it that one step easier to move. Now something else you want to be aware of when moving machinery is what parts are not bolted to the machine. You take like a surface grinder or like this tool cutter grinder, the tables are actually not attached. They're designed to move freely in and out. But if this does tip, I'm going to have a problem. So I'm going to run an extra strap over so that doesn't happen. Another great thing about a machine like this, you'll see it on surface grinders also, is there will be slots here or a hole to run a rod all the way through and that's actually your lifting points. We have a challenge. Right here, we're almost hitting the ceiling. All right, another successful landing. So next up is the milling machine. I've got some unique ways of bringing that out here. I think you guys are gonna like. Remember one of the things is you wanna make sure that your machines are locked in tight. When putting these two by fours into place is you wanna take advantage of a leverage. So if you look at this two by four right now, it has just a slight gap right here. You're using the lever action of the two by four to press the tools into place so they don't move. Okay guys, now it's time to move the milling machine. Certain challenges here is picking it up. Now, this boom, like I said, will go up around 12 feet. The problem with it is, of course, you lose the weight capacity that it can actually lift. And when I shorten it up, I can get over the top of the milling machine. Remember, the milling machine weighs 2,000 pounds, and when you start lifting it, I may be able to get everything hooked up and lifted, but the truck also follows it, so it wasn't quite working. So I'm going to try something I've never done before. I'm actually taking the boom, I'm going to kink it right under here and lift it up. Now it's close to the balancing point, which I'm really fortunate. I did end up bringing the table all the way to the right. Now here's the trick. Once it's engaged and lifted up, it's a lot of weight to put on the engine hoist. And the problem with that is you can't move the engine hoist, it's too heavy. So what we're going to actually do, and it's really the safest way that I've discovered, is lift it up, get the weight of the machine off the truck, and literally just pull the truck out, and then lower down. Okay, we got the milling machine lifted up. Now I'm going to take and pull the truck forward. Okay, so we don't want any Brian Block things happening here. Let's go on, start to lower it down. I'm gonna be a little close to the machine to lower, but I will be as safe as I can. Okay guys, we got a real serious problem here. So we've come across a little problem lowering this down. You know, I talked about how I got this wedged in up here. Well, guess what? When you lower it, it comes out of position so what I've ended up doing is I had to decide if I wanted to crank it back up and put it back in the truck and figure out a new method. And I'm not sure that's a great idea. I'm also not sure if what I'm going to do is a great idea. What I've done is I've put straps on here. I've actually got four of them. So when this lowers, hopefully it won't slide. That's the goal. We're going to uh, cross our fingers and hope it works. Success. I've got a problem. I left the pallet jack in the truck and I can't pull the truck further forward.
That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. We're now down to the very last two layers. We've got the fume extractor easy to remove. We've got two welding carts. And here's the only failure of the whole trip is the spot welder. I forgot to... Here is a great example of the framing system on the floor. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so you can see it. You can see how I have that 2x4. It ends here and is locked in. And if we go to the back side, you can see it's also locked in. Now this 2x4, of course, wasn't long enough, so I put in a scab here. And also what keeps this up against the wall is, of course, that 2x4 to the other side. You can also see how this piece here is screwed in just to keep the theme extractor from moving around. <sighs> it's coming to the end of the day now. We've only got one more item left, the Ultimate Metrology Center. I've got it at the back of the truck right now. And I gotta decide how we're gonna lift this thing up. I think we're gonna do four point lift, get the boom out over the top. I can balance the load a little better with the ratchet straps. And let's see what happens. Okay guys, everything is unloaded out of the truck and now in the shop. But hey guys, it's been fun. Now I have to uh, figure out where everything goes and then go back and get another truck. So I'm, I think I'm becoming a long haul trucker. All right guys, till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Today I want to talk about the Ultimate Metrology Center. I built this about two years ago. And I gotta say, it's working out really, really well. It's kind of cool, I've got the top off, I get to check out my engineering. And this whole thing rested on four pads. And I wanna show you these pads. These are 3 16 inch thick steel with cork on top. They worked out really, really well. The rest of it, I see no problems with this engineering. Now, if you haven't seen the build on this, go back to my YouTube channel, Metal Tips and Tricks, and look up the Ultimate Metrology Center and you'll discover the whole video on the build on this from the design all the way to the construction. All right guys, till next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks.